Hello, my name is Frank Turner and I'm a Senior Solution Architect at Cloudian. I'm going to talk to you today about Cloudian's HyperCloud for Azure and give you a quick demo. HyperCloud enables the multi-cloud and what I mean by this is that Cloudian provides a S3 API access to the same objects that are natively accessible within Azure. This allows the flexibility to leverage the unique best of breed services and applications as needed from each cloud. And it allows you to deploy applications across different geographies and regions. HyperCloud is a enterprise ready solution with a rich feature set and a scale out architecture, which allows you to start small and by adding nodes, scale both capacity and performance as you need it. HyperCloud acts as a bridge from S3 to Azure with a 100% native S3 API that is guaranteed to work with all S3 applications. It has multi-tenancy built in with quality of service and granular billing at a user level uh, to the things a service provider would want to monitor, such as uh, transactions, capacity, and throughput. It provides bimodal access to blob data, policy-based data protection uh, via either erasure code or replicas, and granular policies that can be applied on a per bucket or per container basis so that you can have a very flexible storage and protection scheme that can be tailored on a per bucket basis. And it's a scale out architecture, which allows you to grow and expand as needed uh, on demand without changing the architecture, without uh, needing to migrate data. So this is how it works. Uh, HyperCloud implements lifecycle policies that create a hybrid cloud from S3 to Azure. Cloudian HyperCloud is deployed within the Azure cloud using VM templates. It creates a global namespace with metadata kept within the Cloudian cluster and accessible by S3 clients, either S3 clients from within the Azure cloud or if using a publicly exposed endpoint from S3 clients and applications outside the cloud, such as I'm going to do today. It bridges the metadata and data into Azure containers. And bucket lifecycle policies create the bridging. So when an object is written to Cloudian, it is moved immediately into Azure containers it can be accessed via S3, and it can be accessed natively via Azure. A high-level topology looks something like this. Uh, there's a public client network. Azure provides a public IP, and you can bring your own domain name, or Azure can provide one. That's exposed to uh, client applications and the Cloudian cluster provides an S3 endpoint, access key, and secret key. Internally, there's DNS and load balancing. Since every node within the cluster is a peer and any node can be a controller for a, a specific transaction, we want to distribute the workload across all the nodes. And this is also how we expand performance as we expand the cluster. The objects are tiered out of the Cloudian cluster into Azure containers, which then allows Azure to directly access those objects via the blob service endpoint, the storage account name, and the access key. Now I'm going to show you a demo of how this works. I'm going to first go into the resource groups within Azure. And so there's a Cloudian storage resource group, and then there's the Cloudian cluster. 
and this Cloudian cluster uh, is composed of three nodes, VM0 through 2. The Cloudian storage group is called JC Store. And looking at the blobs here, you can see that we do have some containers already created, but uh, I'm going to create another. And I'm going to do that through here. I'm going to show you first how to configure Cloudian for tiering out to Azure. We start with a healthy cluster. And you can see here that all the services required for transactions are running on all the nodes. This is a good dashboard to look at for health of the system. I'm going to set up the cluster configuration for auto tiering. All we need to do is enable it here. Then we go in and if needed, create a user. And I'm going to use the Azure test user. So I'm going to go back into the Cloudian cluster as this user. I'm going to create a bucket named Backup. And I'm going to set the lifecycle policy to Tier to Azure. So the current version, I'm going to tier to Azure. And now I need the information from Azure that will allow me to connect to it. So I need the access keys. And I know the name will be this. I'm going to copy this key and I'm going to have it create a new container and I'm going to tell it to operate in bridge mode. So this will enable this rule and within this bucket you can see right now there are no objects. So what I'm going to do is go into an application uh, for uh, called AWS CLI. This is a AWS S3 application. I'm just going to show you that I have set up a profile with a AWS access key, secret key, region, and all these things are provided in the security credentials uh, for this user. You can see that we're using s3.azure, uh, and this is a endpoint that we've named and created for this purpose with a specific port. Uh, an access key and secret key are available here. So those have been preloaded into the AWS CLI. I'm going to first list the buckets and then I'm going to Uh, so you can see I'm here at using the wrong commands. I'm here at this directory and I have these files. So I'm going to use a command in the AWS CLI called sync. And I'm going to sync what's in the current directory into the backup bucket. And you'll be able to see as it identifies and uploads each of the files. And note that there is a, also a directory called level one uh, within this directory. So when it completes, I'll go back and show you what it looks like from both Cloudian 
and Azure. So here are the files, uh, and let's see. So same files we see here, and we have a directory created just as we do here. Uh, and I'm going to go to a third party app. This one's called Cloudberry. And I've already set up the connection for Azure uh, to the S3 account. And it's the same endpoint we're using with the access key and secret key. And you can see we have a bucket named backup, level one, and all the files, just the same way. And I could actually go in and, uh, let's see, if I wanted to pick up another file, and place it in here. Okay, so that's also in here now. I can go into Cloudian. I can refresh. And I can see that copy of that image is also placed in here. Now, if I go into Power BI, um, well, let me first go here. So I'm going to now go into the blob store through the portal. And if I look at my blobs, I've created an Azure backup. And within there, I have the same files. And within this directory, I have the same files here. And now if I go into JC store, and Azure Backup, I can see these same files here. And I can cause those files to be loaded in. And now I could operate them through Power BI and similarly with other Azure designed applications. So that concludes the demo uh, at this time. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact Cloudian. Uh, and what this really does is it creates a compatibility cloud, a bridge between S3 and Azure um, so that you could go back and forth.